Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 32 and I am Bezal Razavi. Today we will talk about uh, two important concepts that are used in building a negative feedback circuit, namely the sense mechanism and the return mechanism. And we will want to see how these mechanisms are implemented when we are sensing a voltage or a current and returning a voltage or a current. So we will see how uh, the topologies will show up. <clears throat> and then we'll go over some circuit examples uh, so that we can clearly see how these sense and return mechanisms form overall a negative feedback circuit for us. This is all necessary so that when we want to analyze feedback circuits carefully, we are familiar with the different sections of the circuit so that uh, when we look at a relatively complex negative feedback circuit, we understand what is going on, which part is the uh, feed-forward system, which part is the feedback network, which part, which part is the sensing mechanism at the output, and which one is the subtractor or the return mechanism at the input. Okay, uh, last time we uh, talked about a few uh, items that are also critical to our understanding. We talked about types of amplifiers. We saw that there are four types. Voltage in, voltage out, current in, voltage out, voltage in, current out, and current in, current out. We called this type of circuit a trans-impedance amplifier. It receives a current and generates a voltage. We called this a trans-conductance amplifier. It receives a voltage, it generates a current, and so on. And then uh, we also looked at uh, the models of these amplifiers in terms of basic elements such as voltage and current sources and resistors. And we saw that ideally a voltage amplifier should have an in infinite input impedance because it wants to sense a voltage without disturbing it. But in reality there will be some finite resistance, preferably a high value, and that's what we call R in. Similarly, a voltage amplifier wants to produce a voltage, so it wants to act as a good voltage source. And a good voltage source has a very small output resistance. So the output resistance would be something like this, in series with the output, and that would be uh, preferably a small number. Uh, for other types of topologies, we have similar considerations. So for example, if uh, we consider a circuit that senses a current, uh, measures an input current, and wants to generate a current. Uh, for the input impedance, we would like it to be zero, ideally, because uh, a circuit that measures a current, uh, we have to cut a wire and put it in series, so we want that circuit not to disturb the preceding stage, and that should have a zero input impedance. In reality, it will not be zero, so we call it R in. And as far as the output is concerned, we want the circuit to act, to deliver a good, uh, a, deliver a current, so we want it to act as a good current source. And that means that we want the output impedance to be high. So the output impedance is modeled as a Norton equivalent, because it's a current source, not a voltage source, and that would be a relatively high value. Okay, and so we saw last time examples of how we implement these circuits, at the transistor level. All right, so uh, let's go and look at sense and return mechanisms. I mentioned these briefly last time. Uh, so we're going to talk about sense mechanisms first. Um, actually, let me do something else to uh, uh, prepare us better. So um, alternative feedback model. All right, so the negative feedback circuit that we have seen in the past in general looks like this, right? We have X coming in, going to a feed forward system, the untamed, uh, poorly controlled system. And now we apply feedback around it with some feedback factors, and we ensure that the feedback is negative. 
So this is a good block diagram in the general case, but then we begin to see some difficulties in using this type of abstraction. Suppose X and Y are just voltage quantities. Okay, so I bought a voltage amplifier, I place it in here, and then I built a feedback loop around it to create a voltage voltage amplifier, right? Okay, so this is a voltage. Uh, there's one node coming in, but the voltage has to be measured between two nodes. So where is the other node? Well, the other node would be ground, the reference voltage for everything, right? So this is measured with respect to ground. This is measured with respect to ground. This is measured with respect to ground. And this is measured with respect to ground, right? Okay. Now, sometimes we prefer not to do this. We want the, this other node to be explicitly clear. So in that case, we have to modify this a little bit. So for A1, we will draw it as, you can draw it as a triangle or as a rectangle, doesn't matter. But we'll say that it has two input nodes and two output nodes. In fact, these have names. We call this the input port, two ports that bring a voltage into the circuit. So this is the input port. And this is the output port. So this is A1. This is the output port. Now these second wires could be ground, it's okay, but in the general case, they don't have to be. So this is the input port of A1, this is the output port of A1. Similarly for K, we prefer sometimes to show it with, as a two-port network. So here's a port. This port of K is the input of K, right? Because K is measuring something here. So this is the input port of the feedback network. And this is the output port of feedback net the feedback network. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, these two terminals could be grounded, but in the general the case, they don't have to be. So now we have a two-port representation for A1, a two-port representation for K, and then we need to connect these together, right? This has to be connected to this, then this has to come back to some sort of subtraction mechanism, and then eventually has to connect to the input. X itself would be carried on two wires. It's a voltage, right? It has to be carried on two, two wires. All right, uh, so just keep this in mind as we go along, and we will see uh, how this helps us, for example, for uh, sense mechanisms or for return mechanisms. All right, now, um, so let me go over here and make, a, make two columns. So sense mechanisms. All right, by sense mechanisms, we just mean how do we sense this quantity here? This quantity can be a voltage quantity or a current quantity, as we saw in these four cases, right? This amplifier could be any amplifier you buy, so it could be voltage voltage or current voltage and so on, right? So how do I measure, how do I sense this quantity? Somehow I have to sense it, right? This circuit has to sense it. Now you may say, well, just connect this wire to here, what's the big deal, right? Well, but now let's look at this two-port representation. Exactly how do I connect these wires to these wires? Do I put them in series or do I put them in parallel? Right, that's a valid question. So then we have to think about it more carefully and see. All right, so that's why we consider sense, mechanism, sense mechanisms here directly. All right, so uh, what I will do is I'll make two columns here, one for measuring or sensing voltages and one for measuring or sensing currents. Okay, so the idea is that in some cases uh, this amplifier generates a voltage and uh, this feedback network wants to measure that voltage. So what do we do? In some other cases, this amplifier generates a current and this amplifier wants to measure that current. So again, what do we do? So these columns are for those two cases. All right, so if I have a voltage, how do I measure a voltage? So again, 
let's go back to a little amplifier that we have like this, right? And I want to measure this voltage. So, so sorry, no, that's not a voltage source. It should be a uh, voltmeter. So here's a voltmeter. And we're trying to measure this voltage. Okay, so I've seen, as we've seen in the past lectures, uh, we know that the voltmeter should not load the circuit, should not affect this voltage. So the voltmeter has to have a very high input impedance, right? So we said that to measure a voltage, we have to have a high input impedance. But there's one more point that we sort of know intuitively, but we haven't explicitly talked about. And that is the fact that to measure the voltage between two nodes, my device has to go in parallel with those two nodes, right? This voltmeter has to come and stay in parallel. So this device has two wires. Here we have two wires. We just connect these two wires to these two wires. It seems obvious, right? Okay, so that's how we measure a voltage. So uh, place in parallel. All right, so the voltmeter goes in parallel with the port that we're trying to measure. Wherever you have a port, it has two, voltage, two wires, two nodes to, uh, where the voltage is measured. Uh, that device, it could be a voltmeter, it could be another circuit, has to go in parallel with those two. Okay, so that's uh, obvious enough. All right, so now um, well, let's try to do this then. Let's try to take that amplifier, this amplifier here, and I would like to connect it to a feedback network. So what do I do? Okay, so here's the feedback network. Okay. And I'm trying to measure that voltage, right? So what do I expect to see here? This input impedance? Uh, well, K okay, hopefully does not disturb this voltage when it's trying to measure it. So K should not load this node, which means this impedance should be infinity in the ideal case. In practice, of course, it's not. And in many cases, actually, we don't make it that large. But ideally, that's, that's what it should be like. OK, so uh, again, step by step, we're just uh, gradually building this up, trying to see how eventually we connect this one to this one. All right, so uh, then uh, in terms of uh, having a two-port representation for each of these. So let's, let's make it more general. So I'm just uh, going step by step, right? So let me just add some arrows here to see what we're doing. We're going from here to here. Now we're going from here to here. Uh, our thought process is, okay, well, in the general case, uh, this amplifier uh, it has a two-port representation. So here's the input port, here's the output port. And so does K. K wants to measure the output voltage of A1. So how do these two wires connect to these two wires? Well, K is like a voltmeter, right? So it has to go in parallel. So this wire goes here, and this wire goes here. Okay, so that's how we measure the output voltage of A1 by the feedback network. Before we do something with it, and then and eventually bring it back to the input. All right, so that is our sensing mechanism. Uh, for sensing a voltage, we place this port in parallel with this port. All right, so that's the key point. Okay. All right, so uh, let's look at a circuit example of this. Um, suppose I want to build uh, this uh, feedback network as just a simple resistive divider, right? So I have shown you this situation before where we connected this like this, right? R1 and R2. And we said this, these two resistors measure this voltage, divide it down, and feed it back here. So now you can see that more clearly. Uh, in fact, uh, what you can see is that this voltage is measured with respect to ground, right? With respect to ground. And this resistor divider also goes to ground. 
So indeed, this resistor divider goes in parallel with the output port of this amplifier, right? Now, if that's not clear, let's make a transistor level implementation to see it better. So here's an example of what we have done in the past. So So here's an amplifier that I have bought, right? Okay, I'm going to take this output. This output is with respect to ground. I need to connect the feedback network in parallel with this network, right? So this is from here to ground. So I need to connect a resistor divider from here to ground. I decide to attenuate that signal by some factor and then hook it up here, right? That's my feedback. So R1 and R2. So in all of these cases, we see that uh, we have placed uh, the sensing network, the input of the feedback network in parallel with the output port of the circuit, right? To measure the output voltage, all right? And of course, if we are concerned about this input impedance, we want it to be relatively high, you can see that in this case, the feedback network consists of R1 and R2, so we want R1 plus R2 to be a large number, right? It's much larger than this resistor so that we are not loading this resistor by this measurement. We are measuring this voltage without disturbing it, without changing it, all right? If R1 plus R2 is very large. Okay, so I hope that this gives you a good understanding of how we sense a voltage in a bigger system. This is important because, as I said, when we get to a large complex circuit and we're trying to see what's what and where the output is and what we're trying to do and how we are measuring the output, uh, these types of uh, circuit uh, topologies help us understand that, oh, okay, right, we are measuring the voltage at the output, if we are measuring it in parallel, right? Okay, now let's go to the current situation and see how we do that. Okay, so if I want to measure a current, how do I do that? So let's say, again, you have uh, some sort of circuit here. And uh, there's, a, there's some sort of component here. And we'll call this Z. And we're interested in this current, right? The current's passing through this component, and I want to measure it. Well, I have to cut that branch and place a current meter in series, right? So I have to cut it. So let's cut that. I have to cut this right here. And then I have to insert a current meter in series. So that tells us that to measure a current, we have to place the current meter in series with the branch of interest. So place in series. Okay, so that's the difference between measuring a voltage and measuring a current, right? Okay, so uh, let's suppose that I have a circuit like this and someone says, measure this current for me, right? Okay, so I want to measure this current. I'm going to cut it and put a, a current meter here. Right, it could be AC, it could be DC, whatever you want, right? Okay, so we place this in series, but of course, this current meter must not disturb the circuit. If this current meter has some significant resistance, it will degenerate this transistor. And that's not what we wanted. We just wanted to measure the current. So the impedance of this device has to be very small, right? So we're hoping that this impedance would be close to zero. All right, just the way here, we said this impedance should be infinity so that it doesn't disturb the voltage. All right, so we see two critical points. Number one, we have to place uh, the current measuring device or circuit 
in series with the branch that we want, meaning we have to cut that wire and insert this in series. And number two, that current measuring device or circuit should have a very low impedance. All right, so now let's go to our two port model and see how that should happen. So here's <coughs> A1, here's K. Okay, so A1 has an output port and I would like to measure the current produced by A1 at its output. Right, so let's go back to the original diagram here. This is a feedback system, right? This feedback system measures this quantity at the output, scales it by some number k, and returns it. And we said that this should apply to any type of system you have, right? Any of these four would be fine. So now, if this amplifier generates a current, <coughs> so for example, if it's a transconductance amplifier, or if it's a current-current amplifier, right? it generates a current, and what I need to measure here is the output current of the circuit. So how do I do that? Okay, well, so here's the, the output current flowing, so the output current would be usually be denoted this way, so I out. I have to measure this current, right? Okay, so this current flows this way and also this way, right? This, uh, because we have to satisfy KCL as far as this plane is concerned, so however current flows into this wire has to come out of this wire. Now, how do I measure that current? Well, I have to place the current measuring device or circuit in series with this wire, right? So, we're going like this, and then we go like this. Okay, so take a moment to understand this. This is a little unintuitive because it's different from our simple voltage sensing mechanism. But that's how, what it takes. And again, uh, what should be the input impedance here? Well, we're hoping to measure the current that flows through the output of this network without disturbing it, just like here. So this input impedance has to be zero, ideally, so that this circuit doesn't feel that its current has been measured. Now, one critical point that I want to also mention here is this. Let me change the color so that it's clear to you. <clears throat> when we have a voltage amplifier, right, the output can be left open circuit, right? So imagine something like this, uh, A1, this is V out, right? So you have a, an amplifier, it generates a voltage, everyone is happy, no problem. We can sense it, we can do whatever we want. Now if you have an amplifi amplifier that is generating a current, obviously the output cannot be left open, right? Because the current times infinite impedance will give us infinite voltage. So a, an amplifier that generates a current must have a short circuit at its output. AC wise at least, right? This should be an AC short circuit. So that is the amplifier. If you buy a trans a transconductance amplifier like this or a current amplifier, right? And you want to specify its performance, the way you would specify the gain of the circuit is voltage in current out, right? That current out is specified when there's an AC short, short here. Remember how we found capital GM a long time ago to find GMR out and then voltage gain? Remember the test for GM or the setup for measuring GM was to have an AC short circuit at the output. So it's the same principle here because we have a current at the output and that current is meaningful only if there's a short circuit. If it's open, no current flows, so it makes no sense. So it is for that reason that now we have to cut this wire and then insert this current measuring device in series with that wire. Okay, so that's how we went from here to here, just the way we cut this wire. All right, so these are the sense mechanisms for as far as the output of some circuit is concerned. <coughs> it 
if you want to measure the voltage, we have to connect these to this port to this port in parallel. If you want to measure the current, we have to place this port in series with this port. All right. So again, you can see that we are building our negative feedback systems step by step, piece by piece, so that eventually, when you look at this big large circuit, everything is clear. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, if we want to look at an example, here's an example. I don't like this example too much because we really don't do this in real life, but uh, let's just try it. Okay, so I have a, um, let's see. Actually, maybe I'll just do it like this. So. I have a transconductance amplifier. Transconductance amplifier means it takes a voltage and it generates a current, I out, and there's an AC short circuit here. So we just to put a battery, right? I have a battery here called VCC. And this is a transconductance amplifier. Now, of course, looking at this, you may ask, where does I out go? Is it wasted? Uh, when you have an amplifier, don't you, want, don't you want to use the output? It doesn't seem that we are using this, right? It just gets wasted. Don't worry, that's something that will come later. But for now, just consider this setup. All right. So this is my main amplifier, this A1 that we've been talking about, right? And for feedback purposes, I would like to measure the output of this amplifier by this feedback network to sense it. And because the output is a current quantity, I have to go and break this wire. So let's go and break this wire here. And now I need to put a current meter there. OK. Now, um, I could uh, do something like this, right? Let's go back to my pen here. I could do something like this. And this would be the feedback network, right? So, and the resistance here is very small. So close to zero, as we discussed. So you can see that we are measuring the output current of the amplifier. This is a simple transconductance amplifier by this network. And then this network does something to it and then eventually prepares it for this return action, right, for the subtraction. Okay, that's great, not a problem. Uh, one other technique that we sometimes use to measure the current in a wire is the following. So here's again a wire. Uh, we break the wire. We place a small resistor here in series to generate a voltage, and then we measure the voltage. So, so this is a voltmeter. Sorry, let me let me clean this up. It's a little crowded. So, <clears throat> let me clean this up, and I'll change to a different color. Okay. All right. So here's the situation. I have a wire. I place a resistor. I break the wire to measure the current. And I don't have a current meter. Nobody gave me a current meter. I only have a voltmeter. So I break the wire and place a small resistor in series with it. Okay. So we call this R. How small should it be? Well, it has to be sufficiently small. We won't talk about it here for now. And then I place a voltmeter here. Right? So this still gives us information about the current, right? Because if the current is I, uh, this voltage is IR. And presumably I know the value of R. So when I measure IR by this voltmeter and I know the value of R, I can find I. Okay, so that's another method of measuring the current through a wire. In fact, when you buy a current meter, that's actually what it does, right? It actually has 
a very small resistance that it places in series with the wire whose current we are interested in and then measures the voltage the current measures the voltage across that resistor and that becomes the knowledge of the current okay uh, so much for the sense mechanism now let's go to return mechanisms so return mechanisms deal with this section of the system how do we exactly implement this now we've seen some examples here and there right so for example we said well you know an op amp can just subtract so we took this whole thing and replaced it with this op amp in previous lectures uh, but there are some other interesting things that we need to think about so let me go to the next page and talk about uh, return mechanisms <clears throat> okay so again uh, let's just uh, remember that uh, we have this situation if you want to consider a two-port system a1 and k and uh, I have some quantity here at the input could be voltage or current and this guy is returning some quantity could be voltage or current and somehow this quantity has to be subtracted from this quantity right okay. so that's the question that we want to answer how to subtract two voltages or to currents all right so here's our uh, simplified view just for reference right here's our simplified view a1 here k here plus minus x u and y so our objective is to combine these two x and y right you can uh, subtract them x and y x and u could be voltages or currents it is important to remember it may sound trivial but you will get confused over this at some point it's important to remember that these two quantities have to have the same dimension <coughs> otherwise we cannot subtract them right you cannot subtract a current from a voltage right it has to be voltage from a voltage a current from current right that's extremely critical uh, otherwise uh, it, it's easy to make a mistake in feedback circuits and say we are returning a voltage here or current here without paying attention to these details all right okay so how do we do that exactly well <clears throat> so again let's draw a table and we want to add or subtract two voltages I want to add or subtract two currents right now we talked about this before we said to add two voltages two voltage sources you place them in series so here's a voltage source and here's another voltage source <coughs> right the result is v1 plus v2 so if I measure from here to here it's v1 plus v2 so if I am given two voltages, any arbitrary voltages, right? And I want to add them, I want to obtain a result that's the sum of the two, I just place them in series. Now you may say, well, actually I want to subtract. What can I do? Well, it's not a big deal. If you want to subtract, we just flip one of these upside down, right? So that shouldn't be that hard. All right, so the key point here is that to add two voltages they have to go in series all right okay so let's go back to our two-port representation a1 is here k is here k generates a voltage a1 wants to see a voltage to receive a voltage and then we have an input voltage source v in all right so here's the situation v in is x uh, the output of this guy is u and we're trying to figure out how to connect all of these so that a1 sees x minus u okay so how do we connect all of this 
Well, we said that this voltage and this voltage have to go in series. These two ports have to go in series. So I'm going to connect this like this, this like this, and this like this. So now, what enters A1 is actually what we want. Let's see if that's true. Okay, how much is this voltage? We called it U so far in our jargon, right? U. Okay, then how much is this voltage? What's going into A1? Well, this should be V in minus U. Is that correct? Well, you see, this voltage plus this voltage is equal to this, KVL. So if that's the case, then this voltage should be V in minus U, so that when you add U it to it, you get V in, right? So this is V in minus U. So exactly, that's how we build the subtractor at the input of a system that has a voltage at its input and a voltage as its feedback signal, right? This voltage is the feedback signal, this voltage is at the input, and of course this also requires a voltage. So again, we cannot have voltage here and current here or vice versa, right? These two have to have the same dimension. Okay, so this is how we connect the feedback network to the input. We say this is how we return a voltage to the input of the system, how we return a voltage, right? How we perform the subtraction. Okay, uh, let's see if uh, there is any example that we can look at. So, of course, one simple example was this. So we generated the voltage here. Right, that's U, and then we place this in series. You see, we went like this, and then our voltage source was like this, right? So we've been doing that since electronics one, but now it gives us a new perspective as to why all of this actually works. So you can see that this port is like this port. It goes in series with this port, which is this port, and the input goes to both of those. All right, so just a simple circuit example. All right, let's switch gears to current uh, combining or current returning. How do I return a current? Well, uh, again, the question is, how do I add two currents? So I have a current source, I1. I have another current source, I2. And I want to add these two. What can I do? Well, we just uh, put them in parallel, right? We short these two wires, we short these two wires. Because we know from KCL that this current will be I1 plus I2. And again, if we want to subtract, not a problem. We just swap one of these. Okay, so the key point here is that if I have A1 here, and I have K here, a1 has a port, K has a port, and I have an input current. So here's an input current, I in. And I need to hook up all of these such that, uh, so this would be U, right? This, this is drawing a current call, we call U. And this is a current I in. What I would like to see is that the current going to A1 should be X minus U, or I in minus U. And we decided that uh, this port and this port have to go in parallel. That's how we add the currents. So let's connect this here. Let's connect this here. Let's connect this here. And then this goes down here. I hope it's clear. So I in just goes between these, these two wires. And then these two wires connect to A1. And they also connect to K. So let's just check to make sure that it's, it's, uh, it's what we want. The current going into this wire is I in. It's coming from the input. The current going through this wire is what we call U. So the, the remaining current, what goes into A1, is I in minus U. And that's what we wanted, right? So that works well. <clears throat> All right, so uh, this is the important difference between returning a voltage, meaning subtracting a voltage at the input, and returning a current, right? If this goes in parallel, this goes in series, and of course, 
these must not be confused with the sense mechanisms that we saw on the previous slide. The sense mechanism had to do with here, not here. All right, uh, let's see if there are any examples for this case. Uh, here's a simple example we can build. Uh, I have a current, I in, and it's going into some sort of amplifier. And this amplifier has a feedback network like this. Now remember, I said the feedback network is usually just a fraction or something. This time it's not, it's a little more complicated, right? It's a transistor, but it's okay. This transistor wants to draw a current, right? So here's a current. So again, you want to call this U, meaning that feedback signal. I in goes in here from ground. So this can be considered ground. It goes into this node, it goes into this node. We lose some of it. The feedback network draws some current and the remainder flows into this transistor, right? So this is an implementation of this idea. You see that this current source was placed in parallel with this current source, right? So that the two are added or subtracted when we enter the circuit, just the way these two are placed in parallel. So this port, this port, and the input are placed in parallel. This port, this port, and this port, this input are placed in parallel. Okay, very good. So that uh, concludes our sense and return studies. Uh, let me give you a few more examples uh, so that we get more comfortable with these ideas. Okay, so let's start with this simple situation. And we want to understand exactly uh, where the main amplifier is, the feedforward amplifier, where the feedback network is, what are we sensing, how are we sensing it, and what are we returning and how, how are we returning it, all right? Okay, so we've seen this a number of times in the past. This is just to revisit this. All right, so uh, again, as usual, we just assume R1 plus R2 is very large. Just for simplicity, it doesn't really have to be, but just to make things simple. Okay, so we said that uh, in this circuit, uh, the main amplifier was this here. A1, right? This is the open loop amplifier that we had bought and we wanted to improve its performance. So we applied feedback around it. This amplifier has a, an input voltage to ground. And uh, it also has an output voltage to ground. Okay, so how did I sense the output voltage? Well, I need to sense it in parallel so I connected a resistive network from the output to ground because the output was from this node to ground, right? So I measured in parallel. All right, that's for sensing the output, very simple. Then I divided it down because I thought it would be good to have a K less than one. And then I returned this to the input. Now this is a little tricky here, okay? So we have to be very careful. So let's just examine what's going on here. Here's what we have. I will draw that in this form so that's a little easier to see. This is what you usually call U, right? That's the feedback signal, this signal here. Okay, and Vn is over here. So we refer to this situation. Okay, so and you see that these two have to be placed in series the input port of the amplifier and the output port of the feedback network. Are they placed in series? Where is the input port of the amplifier? The input of the port of the amplifier are these two wires. Remember we said this, this transistor is capable of 
subtracting two voltages. So the input port of the amplifier is here. These two. And sure enough, yes. So U, U has gone in series with the input port of the amplifier and then the whole thing connects to Vn. So U goes in series with the input port of the amplifier and the whole thing goes in series with Vn. So you can see that this voltage and this voltage are, and this voltage satisfy KVL just the way we had this and this and this satisfy KVL. All right. So the purpose of these exercises is to get used to the idea that uh, the circuit is not immediately obvious in terms of the basic structure here, the basic structure here. So we have to think about it a little longer and understand uh, the philosophy behind using this transistor, right? This transistor was used as a voltage subtractor. So uh, the input port of this amplifier becomes these two wires together. Okay, so that is for sensing the output and returning the voltage to the input.